And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Maracaibo, uh, which is an Alexander Pfister game, one of the most popular game designers out there. He's done games that have been very well renowned, like Great Western Trail and Mombasa, and it, people really like his games. The theme in his games is not tremendously strong, they're usually about getting victory points in various fashions, and this one you're sailing in the Caribbean and doing something or other, uh, but they often offer a wide variety of things that you can do. This one is no exception. Let's take a look. All right, I'm not gonna go over every rule of this game, uh, but I wanna give you an idea of how it plays. Players are trying to get the most points, and you're going to get these points over four rounds. You have these cards up here, and each round one of them is going to be revealed. So this would be round two. You can see two are face up, and after four rounds, whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. Now, you can play different scenarios in this game, but I have out here, this is without the story. You can play through a story mode, and I'm not going to talk about this too much, but there's a story mode that has a whole deck of cards, and you can go through these, and they will even add... They will add pieces to the board, but you can play just the base game. That's kind of what I'm going to be focusing on here. Uh, this card here will show you uh, on which spaces each round of the game you're going to put some quests tokens. There's a pile of quest tokens that players can go do. Now, on your turn in this game, you're going to be moving your ship. At the beginning of each round, ships are all going to start in Havana, and you can move your ship from one to seven spaces. And so maybe the blue player wants to move four spaces, one, two, three, four, or they could have gone one, two, three, four. You can follow the arrows, sometimes there's a split. And once you're done moving, and you can go to a spot where there's another ship, you will take the action of the place that you've gone to. Now there are some cities on the board, and these cities have a specific action that you can take at these cities, and this will be randomized at the beginning of each game. There are also villages, which are the places that don't have a tile at them. And when you go to those places, you can take village actions based on how far you moved. So if you move only one space, you're going to only get to take one action. While if you move the full seven spaces, when you go to a village place, you'll be able to take three actions. You're going to take one, two, or three actions, depending on how far you moved. You can also complete a quest, so if you land on a quest tile, you can complete that quest as long as you can fulfill the requirements of it. And as time goes by, there will be other actions that you may or may not take. Let's talk about some of the specific actions. So for example, when you go to a city, you can take the action on that city. Cities have two different actions. You can deliver a good and or you can take the action on them. You're probably gonna always take the action on them, you may deliver the good or not. So let's talk about delivering goods. There is a pile of cards in this game. You're gonna start with some in your hand, and these cards are multiple things. But one of the things that they are is a good. If you happen to land at a city and you have the good, you can discard that uh, card from there, and then you're going to place a disc on there to show that you've delivered the good. This is a player's board. And the reason I'm showing you the board now is because you, when you place these discs, they're going to come at the beginning of the game, there are piles of two discs all over this board. Every time you deliver a good, you'll take a disc off and put it on that good. And sometimes there are other actions which will just let you take a good, uh, uh, one of these discs off. When both discs are off of something, it might give you an immediate benefit or special ability. So for example, this one here, you have normally have a hand of four cards, but once these are both off here, you can now have a handful of six cards. When you draw new cards into your hand at the end of each turn, you can draw from the top of a pile, or you can pay a coin to draw face-up ones, but when you build this upgrade, now it's free to take the face-up ones. This one here simply gives you five coins. This one here will give you a new action that you can take when you take village actions. Some of them you need to have a certain number of upgrades before you can take them off, but all these will do various things and you're trying to get these off to complete your upgrades. This particular city also has the explore action. The explore action, you'll be moving your explorer on the track here. Now, unlike the ships, each explorer can only be in one spot, so if the 
the black player is here and the blue player is going to move two spots, they can go one, two. You can move a certain number of spaces. You do not have to go the full amount. You can go less if you want to. And then wherever you land, you might get victory points, you get, might get money. You can see here, you can remove a disc from your board. The first person to cross lines will sometimes get a bonus. Everyone who crosses this line will get influence with a country. The first person to cross this blue line here gets four points. Everyone else gets two points. And there's all kinds of bonuses you can get all the way to the end. If you get to the end of the track, you can score 10 points if you're the first person at the end of this track. So exploration is one of the parts of the game. Another part of the game is combat, which is shown here at Maracaibo, which is what the game is based off of. There are three countries that are fighting for com you know, the different islands in this game. So we have France, Spain, and England, and each of these has different cubes here, these different countries. So when you do a fight, you're going to draw one of these tiles here, and you're going to decide which country you are fighting with. So if I fight with France, I get four. If I fight with Spain, I get two coins and two attack. If I fight with England, I get a point and three attack. Also, if I pick the country who has the fewest cubes on the board at any given point, I get an extra three attack. You're going to use an attack for various things. There are two main things you can do at the beginning of the game, although you might get more actions as time goes by. You can increase your influence with the different countries. The reason you want to increase your influence with the countries is as cubes come off that country, and you move up on this track at the end of the game, this person's going to get three times the number of victory points that you can see there, plus some bonuses if that country has the most cubes on the board. So moving your influence up will score you points at the end of the game. You can also use that country to attack different areas on the board. These areas here, you'll put a cube of that country in, which will help that country's power go up, and will also give you some sort of bonus. Here to money, here to victory points, etc. Uh, if someone's already there, it will cost more attack points. So when you attack another country, uh, or when you attack, you are spending attack points to do something. So for example, two attack points gives you one influence in a country, five attack points gives you two. Four attack points lets you put a cube out on the board, six attack points lets you displace someone else's cube, removing it from the game. So these countries, no one owns a country, but you're trying to move up an influence with each of them. As the game goes by, players will also gain kind of a disposable fighting that they can spend to add to their fighting points when they are in a battle. And you can see there's actions like this city here, for example, lets me remove a brown cube, I mean a brown disc from my board, and increase my attack power. Quests! When you go to a quest, you have to do pay whatever it says. This requires you to pay one of your little dudes that you have. This one up here requires you to pay some telescopes. Where are telescopes? Well, remember I told you the cards in your hand had different things? Not only are they these different resources, but they're also produced goods, and you can, again, spend those. You'll take the quest, and you'll get the benefits on that quest. So for example, this one here will give me two, point, two money for each compass that I have, and I'm going to get to go up and influence on the country of my choice. As you finish quests, you're going to place them face down here to look at this cool picture in the back, but also your fourth quest will give you three points, and your fifth quest and beyond will give you two points each. So players will have different resources that they're going to be using over the course of the game. One of them is money. You have this fighting resource that you can use. And you have these dudes, these little guys that you can get from playing cards, and you, some of them you have to spend. Players will each have a card at the beginning of the game here, which is kind of a focus on what you are trying to do. So for example, I'm the adventurer, and if I influence two nations, two places each, I can remove this guy, which gives me another guy, and it gives me four money. If I wait till I have three influence in two different countries before I pull this guy off, I'll get four points and four money. And each of these are different things that you have to do. If you do all of them, you'll get extra stuff, and you get to add a flag to your ship, which means nothing but looks cool. Now, cities are neat and quests are neat, but you'll find that one of the things you do the most are village actions. You can go to many places, and again, depending on how far you move, you get one, two, or three village actions. A village action can be simply taking a coin. It can be discarding your whole hand, which you can only do once per turn, to take two coins. But one of the main things that village actions are going to let you do is build the cards from your hands. 
Now, cards are very, very expensive, and you can see they have a cost up here in coins, but when you play that card, you're going to put that card in front of yourself, and these cards are going to do various things. Some cards will give you a permanent bonus, like this one here gives you a minus one discount on all future cards. By the way, every card is going to give you points at the end of the game. Well, not every card, but many of the cards will, so you keep that in mind. This card, whenever you do a combat with England, you get an extra two combat power. Some cards will give you bonuses. This one gives you two of your dudes right away. This gives you three combat power. Some give you what is known as a synergy token. There are five different synergy tokens in the game. You can only get each one once, but when you have synergy tokens, other cards will get better. For example, this one here will move you up one on the point income track, and if you have the crown synergy token, it will move you an additional two on that track. This one moves you up two on the income track, and if you have the anchor synergy token, you'll move up two on the victory point track. These even work in retroactive, so if I built the card out first, and then later on I get the token, I will immediately move up on the track. These tracks are important because when one ship finally reaches the last spot, you have to stop here. Normally you can go one through seven, but if you get here, you stop here, and then on the following turn, you'll move here, and once you move there, there's gonna be kind of an end of round thing. Players are going to get money, equal to how far they are in this income track, and they're going to get points based on how far they are on a victory point income track. You're also going to remove cubes from the board, discard the cards, turn over a new building card, etc., etc. I'm not going to go through all of it. And then on the final round, there's a kind of a final scoring, which includes uh, the scoring for influence you have with the different countries. You're also going to get cards for all the points for all the cards you've built. These buildings up here cost a lot of money, but you can put someone on these buildings. And when you do that, uh, you'll get some final scoring points. Like here, you get points for each assistant that you get on the board. And speaking of assistants, that's another card you can build over the course of this game where you can put an assistant on the board when I build this card. And I'll put it in a very specific location in this case. It goes on spot 16, and every time I go to that spot, I can take the action on this card, which is spend two of my fighting power to get five money and take three village actions. That is kind of an overview of how the game works. There's other things. For example, you can store three cards here, which is the same as having them in your hand, but you don't have to discard them when you discard your whole hand, and they cannot be discarded for resources. They can only be built as the cards themselves, and there's other various actions that you can get as time goes by, but hopefully that gives you a good idea of how you play the game. Overwhelming? It is. There's a lot of pieces in this game. The pieces are fine, though. I mean, we got your money. There's one thing I don't like in this game, and that's the actual discs themselves. I found these to be really annoying. You just shake the board a little bit and they fall over. I almost wish there was recessed things. I don't know what it is. I have found this to be a problem in every game. That's my only dislike. The rest of the game, while the board is very busy, the symbology is not that difficult. Players do have this card here, which is really nice, it shows you the turn, it shows you what you can do, it shows you what your village actions are, it shows you how combat works if you want to, and it explains many of the different cards on the back. You still might have to look a few things up, and I still think most players are going to have a hard time their first game figuring out everything that's going on, like some of you are probably cross-eyed after my rules explanation, but I think once you play it, it does come together and make sense. There is a lot going on in this game, like I said, but at the end of the day, it kind of focuses around your hand of cards. So at the beginning of the game, you, you draw some cards, you'll keep some, you discard some, you put one in front of you that you can keep there, and you have to kind of find what you're going to do. Maybe you'll focus on an exploration track. You can move pretty far on that. Maybe you'll focus on fighting and pick a country or maybe multiple countries and try to get a lot of influence with those. Maybe you'll focus on bringing up your income track and you're getting a vast amount of victory points every turn uh, because that victory point income track brings you stuff. But you're kind of, you need to focus in this game. There's so many things you do. I can go on quests. I can do this. Uh, and you, the buildings that are at the top of the board can sometimes give you sort of a, hey, this is what I should try to do, but it, I promise you it's overwhelming. And that's not to even mention 
the fact that the game comes with this whole extra thing, this whole campaign type thing where different things will show up on the board. I initially complained about that and I got a message from the designer who said, what does it matter? It's extra content, you don't need it. And I was like, good point. So hooray, extra content in the game. I don't know that I'll ever get to that extra content. And the reason why is I think there's a ton of variety in the game itself. That deck of cards is going to be different every game. I'm going to get different cards. The different cities that are out there are going to be different in every game. I'm going to try to go for different upgrades on my ship every game. And that itself is a ton of content. And then if you start playing through missions, that's even more. So by far, there's more diversity in this game than any of his other games. I'll say it now, this is my favorite of his games. I like most of his games. I like Blackout Hong Kong, Great Western Trail, Mombasa, probably the three most uh, well-known games. But I think this one is my favorite. It definitely has similarities to his games. I think I would have been able to tell you who the designer was. This one feels very similar to Great Western Trail, specifically in many ways. As you're moving around a track, you can move pretty far. You can have stops there that give you special um, actions that you can take. But what I really like about this game is the upgrades. Yes, I complained about those discs falling over, but that part of the game is a fascinating, incredibly fun thing because it seems obvious, like, well, six cards is a pretty good thing, but I also might want to upgrade my village actions. Instead of taking just a coin whenever I do a village action, maybe I want to take uh, one military strength and a coin. Or maybe I want to uh, upgrade my military action itself. Or maybe I want to upgrade my speed of my ship where I can move fewer spaces and still take more village actions. And it really is not so evident as to what you're going to do with these upgrades. And each game I feel like I play a little bit differently on how I do them. Money is tight in the game at first. You can get more. In fact, you can focus on getting a lot of money. There are various places, using combat, moving your exploration guy, uh, just taking village actions gets you a little bit of money. Uh, what you're trying to do is you're trying to focus on that engine and get it running. Another interesting thing about the game is the fact that you can move as far with your ship as you want to. So someone could try to speed the game up, but since you, let's say I move seven spaces, move seven spaces, move seven spaces, everyone else still will get another action first and you're not really helping yourself out. However, there have been games where in the fourth round, I start, I rush to the end because I think I'm doing pretty good and why give other people too many extra turns? But never feel like the game is too short. It says 30 minutes per player on here. I think that might be a, a, a tad under. A four player game is probably a little more than two hours, especially if you're a little thinky at all. But the game fun itself for me is this vast hand of cards every time it's different. What am I going to do? How am I going to build these cards? I'm going to look at what's out here. Delivering goods, upgrading my ship. It just feels like there's a plethora of really cool, fun options. Yes, the theme is, pss, I don't even know what the theme's about. Something about the Caribbean, whatever. But at the end of the day, the different selections that I have works really well because it's also kind of razor honed. On my turn, I'm moving my ship. These are the different places I can move it to. Which actions do I want to take? Then, once I take those actions, how will I upgrade my ship slash build cards in my hand? And then I move from there. I like that. It's straightforward and yet offers a whole lot of cool things that I can do. Every game I play, even when I get whooped, which is often in this game, uh, I still feel like I had a really fun, entertaining experience. It's my favorite Fister game and a great, fun one. I definitely recommend it. Maracaibo. Dice Tower Judgment. Excellent! Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.